Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. In the last video, we did some experiments with some steel that I thought was a mild steel, but I determined after quenching it that it actually did seem to harden quite well. So today I'll be making a knife with that steel and I'll put a good edge on it and we'll put it through some different tests to see how well that edge actually stands up to some of the tasks that you might expect to be putting a knife through in the real world. So just to give some quick background, about three or four weeks ago I did a project and I'll link to that video here so you can check it out. But in that video I took a piece of scrap steel, it was something that I had picked up from a, from a local welding shop, leftover piece. I figured it was probably a low carbon steel, something like A36 or some other type of structural or welding steel. And I crafted a wood chopping knife from that and I showed that even without hardening and, and tempering steel, you can actually make a functional knife, at least within certain limitations. But during the process, I started to wonder if, uh, if that steel maybe wasn't actually a higher carbon steel. So in the last video, I did a test to see if it could be hardened. I got some pretty promising results. So today I'm using another piece of that same material. I'm going to treat it like it's a proper knife making steel. I'm going to quench it. I'll use water for the quench. I'll temper it and, uh, and I'll put a good edge on it and we'll test it out. So I, I like the size and shape of this piece. I think it's about right for the experiment that I want to do here. But it had a little bit of an odd cross section. So you'll see that I'm forging it. I'm basically just forging it flat and giving a little bit of shape to the piece. But you'll see that most of the work here is going to be done with the angle grinder and also a, a belt grinder. Because this is mainly just an experiment and I don't really know what kind of steel I'm working with and I really don't know how well this whole process is going to work out, I didn't put a lot of time and energy into the design phase of this knife. The main thing is that I want a long straight edge that I can use for a variety of tasks just to test the steel. So essentially this is just a really long sheep's foot style blade and then I'm using my homemade bevel jig to help me get a, a very consistent flat grind. Now a jig like this is actually pretty easy to make. Uh, there's a million videos out there. I did do a video on how I made this one. Uh, so I'll post a link here if you wanna go and check that one out. So once I have the, the bevel ground down to where the edge is about a 16th of an inch thick, it's time to do the heat treat. Uh, for that I'm using a forge. Probably the most important thing is that the, well the most important thing is to get the steel up to a proper temperature for doing the quench. But you also want the steel to be heated fairly evenly. And what I mean there is that over the length of the whole blade, I don't want to have a lot of variation in the temperature when this blade goes into the quench. There are fairly inexpensive thermometers you can buy to check the heat of the steel, but another good trick is just to check the steel with a magnet. At the point where the steel is actually ready to be quenched, it will no longer be magnetic. So you'll see me checking the blade real quickly with a magnet here before it goes into the quench. I think I mentioned this, but I am using regular water for the quenching process. If this is a lower carbon steel, as I suspect it is, water is going to give me the greatest likelihood of actually getting a hardened steel. So with that done, I just looked over the blade, made sure there were no cracks or, or any kind of obvious defects. I think there was a little bit of a warp in it. Sometimes you get almost like a little wave in the blade. But in this case, it was a very long kind of subtle bend to the blade. So I figured I would try to straighten that out later. and. Even if I couldn't straighten it out, it wouldn't really prevent me from sharpening up the knife and, and testing the edge. For tempering, of course, you can see this won't fit in my handy toaster oven. Uh, so I brought this into the house to do the, the tempering process. So I set the oven at 425. I left it in there for an hour, uh, let it cool down, and then I went another hour at 425. After the knife cooled, I brought it back to the shop to uh, finish the bevel and uh, put the final edge on. But first I needed some kind of a handle. For those of you who've watched a lot of my videos, you know that one of my favorite expedient handle materials is hockey tape. It's inexpensive, it's easy to apply, it provides good grip, a reasonable amount of cushioning for your hand, and it's actually surprisingly durable. So with that done, I turned on the belt grinder to uh, put the finishing touches on the blade. I kept a pretty coarse grit here. I don't remember exactly what the grit is on this belt. I think it might be an 80 grit, but it's actually worn enough 
that it's probably similar to 120 or 150 grit, something like that. And in this case, because I'm not really going for like a beautiful cosmetic finish, I jumped straight from that coarser grit belt all the way to, uh, I think I used a 600, 400 or 600. For the sake of doing this experiment, I'm not trying to put a razor's edge on here. I am putting an edge on that'll slice through paper pretty neatly. And I wanted an edge profile that was fairly narrow so we could really get a sense of how well this edge stands up to the test that I put it through. So once I had it sharpened up, I tested it with some paper. Again, this isn't a razor's edge, but it'll slice through paper pretty well. And the main thing here is I just want to show how it cuts at the beginning of the testing and then how it cuts at the end. For the first test, I'm using cardboard. Cardboard is actually a fairly abrasive material. You know, for anybody that's ever used a pocket knife or a kitchen knife or something to cut through cardboard, you know that it will wear down an edge pretty quickly. After the cardboard, I tested it on paper again. I couldn't really see any difference in the cutting before and after. So for the next test, I decided to split some wood with this thing. As you'll see here, I'm actually going after some pretty big pieces of wood. This is not real easy splitting. There's a lot of knots in here. You'll see me taking some big swings here. You'll see me batoning. And I also did some cross grain, you know, chopping and hacking. The point of this is to see if I can get that edge to either get a nick in it or to roll. Uh, a lot of times with softer steel that will happen pretty easily, especially when you're doing kind of violent cross-grain chopping like this. Um, if you have a fairly fine edge, right along the apex of that edge, it's pretty easy to get, a, to get a dent in there or some type of deformation. Sometimes the edge will actually roll a little bit so you can see that it's bent over. So I spent several minutes here really doing my best to abuse the edge of this blade and I was actually surprised to look at the edge after all of that and see that there was no apparent damage. There's no evidence of bending or cracking or chipping. The edge seems to have held up very well. So really the last thing to do here is to go back and see if it'll still slice through the paper. So after all that testing, there was no difference, at least there was no difference that I could tell in how easily it sliced through the paper. So as far as I'm concerned, this steel performed very, very well. It seems to have hardened well, it seems to be a resilient steel, it holds an edge. No signs of damage to the steel whatsoever, at least not from the tests that I put it through. So I am ready to declare this whole experiment a success. Of course, the exact composition of the steel still remains a mystery. But at least from the evidence we have here, this is probably not a low carbon steel. It's certainly not that, you know, 25% or less that you might expect from structural steel or, or a welding type of steel. So I guess the conclusion I would draw from this is if you're just getting into knife making or, or maybe you're looking for, a, for an inexpensive way to practice, don't feel like you have to go out there and spend a bunch of money on expensive knife steels. Go ahead and use whatever you have to practice on and go ahead and test some of those pieces and see if they quench, see if they'll take a good hardening, a consistent hardening. You might be surprised. I know I was. And if you're willing to do a little bit of testing like this, you might actually be able to make some really decent knives or other tools and save some money in the process. Well, thank you for watching today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I usually do about three uploads per week, so there'll always be something new to check out. And if you have anything you'd like to say, I would love to hear from you, so go ahead and leave a comment below. And with that, I will say, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.